The video I will be presenting is a continuation of the presentation WebLogic Server on Kubernetes CI CD deployments. The functionality that I will be demonstrating already has been released. Part 3 Updating the application and domain configuration of the running domain in Kubernetes. By using these tools, we can automate a full CI CD deployment. I will be showing you how using the image tool and its integration with WDT and the operator, we can automate a full CI CD deployment. I will update an application and I will update the data source. When I check that in into my GitHub repo, that will invoke pipeline in Jenkins. The first step in that pipeline will be to invoke the image tool and its integration to WDT. I will do an image tool update using as my base image, the WebLogic domain image. So now I will have a version two of my domain image. The second step in the pipeline will be to push the new image into a repository that is co-located with my Kubernetes cluster. And then I will edit the domain custom resource with a new image name. As soon as the operator sees that the, that the image name has changed, it will roll the domain, creating containers based on the new image. The next thing I want to show is a pipeline. And now this pipeline runs every time that I update an application. I have a sparse model of the YAML that only has a data source and the application. So you can have the entire model or the sparse model. This is the, the test data source, and I am going to change the URL. So I have a property for the URL, and I have a password and the user to the database. So I can change any of those values, and then I have my application. Let's see, change the user to George. And the URL is different than the URL that is there right now. So if you, if you go back to our data source and you look at the connection pool, you see that it has some access. And then this is just a data source. It's not really connecting to any database. It's just for demo purposes going to modify that to be this string test.example.com save this properties and let me make a change also to the application okay so let's make a change to the title save this, my repository where I have my application. So as soon as I check in, commit the changes and push them into this repository, that will kick off the Jenkins pipeline. So git add the index. I want to show as well the Jenkins file so you can see the different steps. So the image name is going to be the same image as before, Phoenix region, WebLogic AAS, which is the tenancy, and then the name is matches the name before, but now instead of colon one, I am putting the date in as a tag of this image so that I have a new image name every time I make an update. I'm going to build the archive, so I'm going to package my application. And then I'm going to invoke image tool update, passing in the image name that I want to create. And I want to make a change, an update to my old image. So it will take the value of the first image and then uh, make a change to that image. I will do a deploy. I pass in the archive that I built in my previous step and the sparse mo WDT model with the data source changes. And then I also tell it what the domain properties are. 
The next step is to push the image into OCIR. And then I'm doing a cube cuddle edit, a JSON edit to the domain custom resource to change the image in that domain custom resource to the new image name. Scribe the domain custom resource. The last step in the Jenkins pipeline is going to modify this image name to the new image name that is created by the image tool update. So let me do a git commit push to my repository. Okay, and this should kick a Jenkins pipeline. This is my pipeline for the application update. So here is building that image. Let's look at the... So it's doing a from, so it's taking the, that original image and now it will invoke WDT to update the domain configuration and deploy the new application. So this is where it uh, invokes the WebLogic deploy. It's updating the JDBC uh, values in the configuration. So it created this new image. This is a new image name. And then it pushed the image so the operator is going to look at that domain custom resource and it will uh, roll the domain based on the new image. So we see it starts from the admin server. The ready 01 means that the pod is running and now the admin server is on its way up. So the admin server is up and now it will go to one of the managed servers. So we see that it chose managed server 3 so it's terminating that one. And it will do this all through uh, the cluster until it finishes with the other two managed servers. So we should be able to see the data source changes in the console. So you see that now instead of XXX, the data source is testexample.com. The user was changed from Scott to George. As soon as the first managed server is rolled, then we should be able to hit it with a load balancer. There it goes. It's starting. Let me put a watch on. So now it's terminating. So server 3 is all the way up. Now it's terminating managed server 2. Let's see if we can hit the load the So one hasn't been rolled, so it still has an old value, and this is three, so it now has a new value. And you can see that the user also has changed. Okay, so let's recap. I demonstrated introspecting a domain configuration that I have on my local box by using WDT Discover. Uh, that introspection produced a WDT YAML model and an application archive. I took the WDT YAML model and I modified it to make the domain runnable in Kubernetes. I defined some properties that I wanted, like the credentials. And then I ran a pipeline that ran only once. And what it did was it invoked image tool create an integration with WDT. I passed that WDT model YAML that was produced by my introspection and the archive, and that produced a domain home and image with that domain that I had introspected. And then I deployed that by invoking kubectl apply of my domain YAML. And that created the domain custom resource. As soon as the operator saw the domain custom resource, it stood up a domain based on my definition in the domain custom resource. The second pipeline that I had demonstrated is I made a modification to my application that I had deployed and I made a change to the data source. So I took a, a sparse WDT model based on the original model and I changed some values in the data source. And then when I checked that into my GitHub, what it did is it started a Jenkins pipeline and the first step was to invoke image tool with its integration in WDT. It was an image tool update. It pulled the image, the original image, and then it invoked WDT update. It invoked WDT deploy, it deployed my new application, and it made the configuration changes to the data source. The second step, uh, it pushed the new image. 
into the local repository on OCI. And then the last step is to edit the domain custom resource with the new image name. As soon as the operator saw that new image name, it rolled the domain starting from the admin server and then going one managed server at a time to create the container running the servers based on the new image created. Hope uh, this demo has been informational for you. Thank you very much.